Hi pen fans, this is Brian at the Edison Pen Company. Hey, I am really, really excited to be introducing a brand new pen to the Signature line. Uh, this will be a brand new model and a brand new filling system. Now, a lot of you might know that this has been coming for a while. We actually probably could have launched this about two or three weeks ago, but we had some vacation planned. The last thing that I want to do is launch a new pen right before vacation. So I've been itching to share this information for a while and I'm excited to finally get this launched here. So this new pen will be called the Menlo and it will be a pump filler. Now I'll cover what a pump filler is here uh, in, in a little bit, so bear with me. But since this is a brand new design, rather than getting right into the pen, I thought I would just go ahead and put up some good photos of this pen right now. Okay, that was the pen. Now, for those of you that are well versed with vintage pens, did you see something there that looks awfully familiar? On the back of the pen, you might have seen that, in my case, a brass post that sticks out. Um, essentially, this pump filler was inspired by the vacuumatic. Now, I'll get into some of the reasons why we decided to call it a pump filler versus a vacuumatic. Um, now, first of all, all of the Parker vacuumatic. Uh, copyrights and patents are well expired so if I wanted to I certainly could have called this a vacuumatic. Uh, what's important to note about this is that the function and the, the, the way that the pen actually works and fills is the same as the vacuumatic but for a couple of reasons I decided not to call it that. Number one you know here at Edison we do uh, we don't really do replica pens um, I would, you know, when we do an older filling system, I'd rather think of it as a revival of a filling system and also improving upon it. When we did the pneumatic filler, that was inspired by a second generation Chilton. But, you know, I, uh, there's about three or four things that I did to that filling system that I feel have improved it. Uh, the addition of an O-ring, an extra brass sleeve to help with alignment. There were some other things there as well. In the case of this pump filler, or vacuumatic if you will, um, in, you know, I think that using brass is probably better than, than, than plastic in most cases with the vacuumatics. Uh, but Parker didn't have much choice on that. If you know your pen history, they were rationing metal for the war back then. Um, and then we also made some improvements on how the diaphragm attaches to the mechanism itself. So, for a lot of these reasons, number one, Edison really not being a replica building company, and the fact that I think we're making some improvements on these mechanisms. Lastly, I also think that the word vacuumatic is awfully um, distinctive to that pen anyways, and we're not making a vacuumatic. So we decided to call it a pump filler, but the important point of all this uh, conversation here for you to realize is that it will function uh, the same and the design, the inspiration, the maintenance, pretty much everything about this pen when it comes to the concept of the filling system is the same as a vacuumatic but we're calling it a pump filler. Okay before I get into too many details uh, and specifications on the pen I want to take a quick minute to give out a special thank you. Uh, Jack Lynch is a friend of mine that I've known probably since about the inception of the Edison Pen Company. He's a very experienced machinist. Now he and his son Chris Lynch uh, of CJ Precision uh, came to me about four or five months ago and said hey you know what Brian I think that we can make a pretty cool filling mechanism for you. Uh, what do you think? And that's really how that came about. So um, I just wanted to take a quick moment and say very special thank you to Jack and Chris Lynch. Uh, without them, this pen really wouldn't exist. Uh, they did a great job on these mechanisms, and I'm real happy that they, they, they came to me with, with the idea. So anyways, Jack, Chris, thank you. I'll move on to some of the specs on the pen now. All right, so let me get into some specifications on this pen. Um, I think you can see it's obviously a torpedo shape. Um, it's, I would say, medium size. It's not a smaller pen. It's certainly not a larger pen. Um, capped, the pen is 21 grams. Now, you know, for those of you that are Edison pen owners, you know that most of our pens come in, uh, uh, you know, as awfully light pens. Now, we do have a brass mechanism right here in this pen, so that adds a little bit of weight, but not tremendously. Most of our pens come in, you know, a pen of this size would come in at about 18 or 19 grams. So this pen coming in at 21 grams 
just a little more weight here in the back, and that's what, and, that, and that's why. Now, does that three grams really make much of a difference? Not a heck of a lot. I can't feel uh, that much of a difference when I'm writing with it. After all, we're talking about three grams here. Um, uncapped, the pen is 15 grams. Still relatively light. Um, with the cap on, the pen is five and three quarters of an inch uh, long. Uh, with the cap off, the pen is five and three eighths of an inch long. And then when the pen is posted, it is six and a half inches long. I'll discuss a little bit about the, about the design itself. Um, you know, this is a unique section. We haven't really used this shape in the past. I always like to try and make a nice, clean transition from section, threads, from section to threads. Uh, obviously, you can't do anything about your finger feeling these threads when you hold the pen, but I can always do my best to minimize that step in between those two, and that's what I've done here as well. When we get to the, this portion of the pen, I engineered a tiny step in there, something that is not going to bother your finger. It's rounded off. The reason that that's there primarily is that when the pen is capped, that really gives a very, very nice transition. It's really kind of a seamless transition from the cap down to the barrel, and I think that's a really good look. Um, on the back here is where you would unscrew to expose that mechanism. I won't push the mechanism because this pen is actually full right now. Um, so I think that about covers it as far as the specifications goes on this pen. Let me go ahead and get into how you fill it. Okay, when it comes to filling the pen, I should probably have a quick discussion first about exactly how it works. Uh, this is my demonstrator version here. And for all you demonstrator fans, this is great news because this pen really does make a fantastic demonstrator. A lot of people were disappointed when I introduced the pneumatic filler because you know that, that brass sleeve had to cover the, the, the sack inside. So it really kind of ruined the view for a demonstrator. Um, uh, and I think a lot of people might have been disappointed by that, but it was just the nature of the design. The brass tube had to be there. It's just, it's just inherent to pneumatic fillers of that design. Now in this case, this is going to make a great demonstrator, and it also makes a very good ink view type pen as well. You know, we can, we can also make these with fantastic acrylics. You know, this, this one has an amber ink view to match. And so that's really good news. So I'm sorry, I, I took a little time on that demonstrator issue. But when it comes to this, I wanted to share exactly how this works before I show you filling it. Now this is the brass mechanism itself. And essentially what this is is a piece with a post coming out the back, a spring so that it would, will retract, and then there's this latex diaphragm on the front. And when you push this forward, that diaphragm is also moving forward. When you push forward, that creates compression. When you release this, when you release this, this, that creates vacuum. So how does that work on this pen? Well, essentially, when you push this diaphragm in, you are creating compression inside the pen. And what that will do is, it will blow air, or it'll expel bubbles, or it'll, it'll, it'll expel air out the, out the tip of the nib. And then when you release this, when you bring this back in, then that creates vacuum. You can see a little bit of, a little bit of ink in there is moving right now in the breather tube. So what happens is, when you are pushing this in, creating, creating compression, you're pushing out air. When you release the mechanism, you're sucking in ink. And what happens is, throughout these strokes, you are bringing more ink into the pen than air that you're pushing out. So the net result of that phenomenon is filling the pen. Once the ink level gets up to the level of this breather tube, then essentially you're gonna recirculate that ink. So what that means is that's when the pen is full. When you um, have this in, in an ink well and you're filling it, and the ink level gets up to that breather tube, then you no longer expel bubbles. And I'll show that to you right now. Okay, so to fill this pen, I, I have a glass of water and I've just basically diluted a little bit of ink in here so that you can see it. This is just for demonstration purposes so that everybody can see clearly what's going on. If you're doing this at home, obviously you'd be filling this in an ink well. So um, to fill the pen, you're going to unscrew the blind cap back here on the back. And then you're going to submerge the pen all the way up to the section. And now watch what happens here when I start pushing the plunger up here. You'll see the ink 
uh, moving in and out of that breather tube and filling the pen. And I think that was five or six strokes. Once you get to a point of where you're no longer expelling bubbles out of the bottom of the pen, like I am now, or like I am not expelling bubbles now, then you know that the pen is full. Yeah, there's no point in going beyond that because the pen is completely full. If you have an ink view barrel, then obviously you can tell when the pen is full. If you don't have an ink view barrel, then you can just simply keep repeating that until you do not see bubbles being expelled out the nib. Then you know you're completely full. To empty the pen, you're just going to do the exact same thing, but you're going to make your strokes a little bit more um, slow on the downstroke. So when you empty the pen, just you know, if, if you hit the if you hit this button or the, if you hit this plunger really hard, you're going to expel more air than ink. So what you want to do is just uh, push the plunger down or push the mechanism down slowly, and you'll see that the pen will empty. It takes a little longer to empty the pen than it does to fill the pen. Um, I, I haven't counted exactly how many strokes, but it does take a little bit longer to do that. So that is essentially how the pen fills and empties. Very simple, very easy. Okay, when it comes to maintenance of this pen, uh, please understand that everything that I'm about to say here is completely optional. Now, if, if you like to tinker with your pens, then this is really for you. If you would rather not, then don't worry about it. I just showed you how to fill the pen. I showed you how to empty the pen. So the only maintenance that you would have to do right there would be flushing the pen. And that's easy. You fill the pen and empty the pen with you know clear water until the inky water is gone. That's very easy. That's exactly how you would... Uh, that's exactly how you would flush the pen. So flushing is easy. What I'm about to cover right now is if you want to tinker with your pen, if you want to switch nibs. Um, the section here is not sealed. I, th this will not be like, like the pneumatic filler. I did seal that section for very specific reasons. On this pen, this will not be sealed. So you can unscrew this section right here. Let's say that you have a stain on your ink window. You can unscrew the section. You can get inside here with a Q-tip and you can clean out the ink window, no problem at all. Um, what you would want to do though, however, all the pens will come with silicone grease and a letter you know, that would explain exactly how to do this if you needed to. Just apply a little bit of silicone grease here and I do mean a little bit. Um, it doesn't take much of this stuff to, to, to accomplish exactly what you need and you don't want to make a mess. Screw this back in. Very easy. Now, when it comes to switching nibs, um, that's also very easy. It's the exact same concept involving silicone grease. So if you wanted to, to switch nibs, then you're simply going to unscrew your nib from here. I like to always grab the nib from the top and the bottom to make sure that I'm not touching the tines out here. If you touch these tines, you could misalign and then you've got some problems. So you would just simply unscrew your nib Remove it. If you need to apply some, you can put a little bit of silicone grease on these threads right here. Make sure when you do this that you stay away from the back. This part in the rear, make sure that you're not getting any grease near where this breather tube attaches. That could create problems. So once you do that, you know, you can take your new nib and put it right back in. Screw it in. No problem. Now, some people might be asking, well, Brian, long term, you've got a latex, you know, uh, diaphragm in here. What am I going to do? You know, let's say 30 years from now, that latex diaphragm is starting to deteriorate. You know, a lot of, a lot of the original pens, like the Vacuumatics, of course, you know, over decades and decades, you may need to replace this diaphragm. Now, as long as the Edison Pen Company exists, we'll take care of this for you, no problem. But I can't foresee the future. Uh, the, the future that I foresee is that I'm in business for a very, very long time. 
But just in case, let's say, hypothetically, the Edison Pen Company is not around to do uh, maintenance on this pen 30 years from now, fear not. One of the beautiful things that we did with this mechanism right here is we made these threads identical to what the Vacumatic uses. So these specialty wrenches like this that you use to fix these, that pen repair use to fix these pens, will work perfectly fine with this. So the bottom line is that anyone who does pen repair will be able to take care of this pen as well. We did that specifically to make sure that long term there would not be issues with maintenance of this pen. Any pen repair person that, 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 can, that can work on a Vacumatic can work on this pen. Um, the other thing is that really replacing this is not a difficult task. If, if you have this tool, or there's m many variations on this tool, then you're in good shape. You, there's plenty of articles online that show you how to do this. You get a new diaphragm, you unscrew this, you attach the new diaphragm, you put it back in. It's really very simple. So that's the general maintenance of this pen. Okay, so I think that, that covers everything on this pen except for price. Uh, the price of this pen will be identical to the other Edison exotic filling systems, such as the bulb filler, the pneumatic filler. Um, this will be 350 with a steel nib or 450 with an 18 karat nib. Now we do have, I, I will say, if you're watching this on YouTube or a blog reader, maybe head over to edisonpen.com because I will have a link to all of our current inventory. We have 50 of these made and we're actually manufacturing more right now. I anticipate these selling really well and we do have the DC Pen Show coming up in less than a week, I believe. So um, we're, we're going to try and meet a lot of demand with these. Um, so like I said, take a look in the current inventory galleries. That's what you'll see what is available, ready to sell, can ship today if you'd like. Um, of course, you know, this is a signature line pen, so you can contact me and say I want this made in whatever material. I want it customized in this way. I want the ink view window. I don't want the ink view window. You know, we can customize it to a T for you. So I think that covers everything. Um, if anybody has any questions, please leave them in the comments of my website or YouTube or wherever you're watching this, and I'll be happy to address those. But like I said at the beginning, I'm very excited by this. Special thanks to Jack and Chris Lynch, and uh, I think this will be a real hit for the Edison Pen Company. Everybody have a good one. See ya.